Phase three now, Rubio's rough night. There is no way that the establishment can spin Super Tuesday positive for Marco Rubio, but they will, or at least they will try. It was ugly for the senator from Florida who claims he is the only person who can win. So far, out of 15 caucuses and primaries, Rubio has won exactly one. And that victory came in a very liberal state. For the first time in a long time, young Americans believe the American dream is dead. It is not dead, but it is in a lot of trouble. Because after eight years of Barack Obama, the American dream, the American dream is slipping away for millions. But here's the good news. We do not have to remain on the road we are on right now. And when I am president of the United States, we will not just save the American dream, we will expand it to reach more people than ever. Now, in the South, Rubio lost to Trump by double digits across the board. His best showing was in Georgia. But in the end, it wasn't even close. Joining me now from Johns Creek, Georgia, political consultant with the Weathers Corporation, Seth Weathers. Seth, uh, for Donald Trump in the SEC, a clean sweep. And, and something that uh, we've noticed uh, out of the SEC, in the South in particular, voters are just plain mad right now. I guess mad at the GOP, mad at Washington, D.C. Yeah, I think you're right. And that's what, something that the exit polls showed. Uh, the highest percentage of people that came out of from voting said that they were disappointed in Washington and sick of the way the system was and were looking for something different. And I think Trump has obviously been providing something different. And that's what we saw happen yesterday. OK, so in Georgia, 76 delegates at stake for the Republicans. Donald Trump with a clean victory there over Marco Rubio. Uh, and then Ted, uh, Ted Cruz behind uh, Rubio. And voters uh, coming out of these polls were saying they were angry. Yes, they were angry, angry voters. And they made up their minds rather late. A large uh, percentage of them did. And those that made up their minds late broke for Rubio and or Cruz. Six out of 10. Uh, feel betrayed by the grand old party, the Republican Party. 46% did not want Donald Trump, yet Trump comes out the victor here. But a uh, majority of voters on the GOP side wanted an outsider. And um, when they were asked who ran the most unfair campaign, uh, they said uh, Donald Trump. But either way, um, Donald Trump comes up with a clear and clean and decisive victory here. I agree, and I think that that's going to, I think the election changed going forward uh, from last night. And, you know, there's a lot of, like you said, there's be a lot of spin on how Rubio really, you'd think he had a victory speech last night. Uh, what the victory was, I don't really understand. And what the pathway to victory for Rubio going forward, I don't see it there. Um, they're, now they're talking about Rubio, if he's going to win Florida and what he's going to do there. Rubio's in third place in his own state. Trump is crushing him in Florida in the polls right now. We've got two weeks to go. He's not going to be able to make up that kind of ground. There's nothing he can do. All right, Alabama, he, Alabama, 50 delegates uh, at stake on Super Tuesday. Again, it was Donald Trump with a resounding victory, large margin over Ted Cruz. The voters in Alabama uh, made up their minds rather late. They said six out of 10 feel betrayed by uh, the Republican Party, eight out of 10 favor a temporary ban on Muslims coming into this country, and six out of 10, again, want a political outsider. Did you expect such a, a wide margin of victory in Alabama? Absolutely. I think Alabama was a very ripe state for Trump, and I don't know if you recall, but that's the first state he went to for his first rally after announcing uh, they had over 20,000 people in a stadium there, and they've gone back and done very well. Um, he ended up coming out 22 points ahead of his closest competitor in Alabama. That's in a primary race, it's just really unheard of. I, I can't think of a race where you've had this level of individuals in the race and have that kind of margin. It's nuts. OK, let's go to Tennessee now. 58 delegates um, at stake for the Republican Party. Trump again with a big victory over Ted Cruz in second place. Voters in Tennessee, angry. There's that anger again. Uh, half want some sort of change in Washington, D.C. Uh, their biggest concern is the United States economy. And again, voters want an outsider. Kind of dovetails what else we're seeing in the SEC states. Yeah, I think you're right. And again, Trump won there by um, 14 percentage points in Tennessee. And um, I think you're going to see, and it's not just the South that's disappointed the SEC primary that's disappointed with Washington and looking for someone new. I think you're going to see that continue throughout the race. I think Florida is going to be a great example of that coming up. All right, Arkansas um, I, Arkansas was a close race. 
Uh, Trump pulls it out by three points over Cruz. It was 33 to 30. Rubio at 25. Again, voters angry. Eight out of 10 voters in Arkansas. Uh, evangelicals. I guess that would explain why the close race where Ted Cruz uh, comes in very close to Donald Trump. Of course, Cruz picks up support from many evangelicals. Uh, a lot of voters there uh, favor a temporary ban on Muslims as well. Four out of ten consider themselves very conservative. Again, that's good for Cruz, but, but Trump holds off Ted Cruz. Well, that's the amazing thing about it. I, and Cruz has constantly stated throughout the campaign in our earlier months that the SEC primary was his campaign firewall. They were going to do so well here. He was going to win Georgia. He was going to win Alabama. They were going to clean up, and that would uh, put a distance between him and his competitors. But what happened was Trump was able to get a hold of the evangelical voters and show that evangelical voters are getting tired of being lied to. They're right. getting tired of someone going up and saying Jesus over and over in a, a campaign stump speech and saying, elect me, and you're going to see real change. And it doesn't happen. And so they've got a guy that's maybe, uh, you know, what you wouldn't imagine is someone that typically evangelicals would get behind, but they see Trump as someone that actually gets things done and actually will stand up for evangelicals and everyone else in the race. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see it play out. All right, let's roll through the uh, Democrat results. It was a clean sweep for Hillary Clinton as well, starting uh, in Georgia. She won a majority of black votes there. Any surprises? No, 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 no. I believe it was on your show uh, a few weeks back that I'd uh, we discussed this earlier, and I said there's no way that uh, Democrats in the South are going to be able to go for Bernie. And um, I think uh, that came true yesterday, and I think that the race is over for Bernie. Okay. I mean, the Democrats are never letting him be the nominee anyway. Alabama, 60 delegates at stake. Again, it's Hillary Clinton winning a majority of black voters. Let's move to uh, Tennessee. 79 delegates for the Democrats. Uh, Clinton doubles Bernie Sanders' numbers. 52% of Democrat voters want more liberal policies out of Tennessee. That shocked me. Does it shock you? Not really. I mean, look at the direction the Democrat Party's going. You've got a guy running as a socialist that's been the number two contender <laughs> throughout the race. So it's not overwhelmingly surprising. And I think Hillary has been going, even is hard to believe as it might be to imagine, been going to the left a little bit to make up for that, and um, I think she's taken away um, the reason for a lot of people to be with Bernie. All right, Arkansas. This, Arkansas is uh, Hillary's former uh, home state, uh, easily wins there. And it's interesting, the economy in Arkansas, they said, was the uh, among Democrat voters was the number one issue, but voters also in that state want a uh, political insider. So it's completely opposite. It's so interesting when you look at the results and the uh, the exit polling that the Democrat voters uh, largely want a political insider, and the Republican voters largely want a political outsider. Okay, that's because Democrats have a resounding faith in the government actually being able to accomplish things and actually being able to get things done, and they believe that the bureaucratic system is what takes care of them. Republicans believe completely opposite. So I think you're seeing that, um, you see that in the election results. Head to head, I think uh, when it comes to the SEC, if it's Hillary v. Trump, I think Trump trounces Hillary. Seth, thank you. Coming up next, stop the tape. President Hillary, Barack Obama's third term. Also ahead, here it comes, the all-out advertising assault on Donald Trump. I was scammed because I believed in Donald Trump. He can make people believe practically anything.